Hey everybody, thanks for coming back to the channel. Bree Lambert Sanders here. Jeff Sanders, nice to meet you. And um, we are near the end of our series on early running influencers of coaching. Uh, or this, did I say that right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, okay, good, yeah. cool. <laughs> Sometimes my tongue gets in the way. It's okay. All this we all have that problem. Anyway, so we are talking about Arthur Lydiard today, and um, I'm sure for those of you watching this, I'm I'm sure most of you have heard of Arthur Lydiard because a lot of coaches um, in the running arena have, you know, either obtained some sort of philosophy that he has um, or had had been known for into their own training methodologies. Um, and so we thought we'd go ahead and talk about him today. And Joe is going to lead that discussion and I'll just kind of fill in here and there. So what makes Arthur Lydiard such a amazing coach or influential, I guess? Other than he trained 17 Olympians that got medals, and yeah, he's just a great coach. You know, what what can you say? I mean, long slow distance, everybody's heard about it. He uh, uh, was a a good coach because he actually used himself as a as a as a training tool or a guinea pig, whatever you want to call it. And he would try his different philosophies and thoughts on himself, and. Um, over time, he learned what worked and what didn't work, and, and he coached so many great runners. Uh, you can go down the list. There's so many of them. You can look it up. I'm just not going to list them all, but the bottom line is that he came up with this training method. It was a five-tier training method, um, and it, so it starts off with, I think, don't hold me to the exact uh, numbers on this, but it was 10 to 12 weeks of aerobic conditioning work, and then he went into a phase of uh, hill circuits where he would do these hill circuits where they would do bounding exercises up, rest the, at the top, come down. If it's a gradual hill, he would come down working on some leg speed and then back around. He, they would do this circuit of, of hill repeats um, mm -hmm. through bounding exercises, kind of plyometric type stuff mixed in with some late turnover stuff. And they would do it for approximately an, an hour or so. And they do that like two to three days a week. So they would they would go aerobic conditioning. They would do the hill bounding mm -hmm. uh, phase, and then they would go into an interval phase where you're doing. It depends on your event, right? But four, ten by four hundred, or or you know five times one k, et cetera, et cetera. And then after the interval phase, then he would go into a um, a phase where it would be uh, like complex training. Uh, I call it complex. He called it coordination training, mm -hmm. where he you, he would take one of these each of all these elements and he would put them within the week, and then you would go, do this training uh, through the rest of the season. And the final phase was the freshening up phase. He called it, or we call it now peaking, hmm. where he would back off everything, let the athlete's legs come back to him, yeah. and they would compete. And several runners over the time over the periods of time would try to incorporate certain aspects like Ron Clark would, but he would never completely finish everything and he would always be missing one element. Um, but I mean, from Peter Schnell, John Davies, uh, you know, Dick Quacks, uh, Rod Dixon, uh, so many great runners that uh, won medals and set records. He, he coached uh, some of the best of the best. And I still think Peter Schnell is one of the greatest runners to ever live considering the times he ran on grass and cinder tracks, uh, he was a phenomenal athlete. And and as far as coaches go, he I think he has to be number one in terms of I mean, Arthur Lydiard. Arthur Lydiard, yeah. number one in terms of bringing forth all the elements together. At least mm -hmm. he got it pretty darn close. And mm -hmm. um, and even coaches like Alberto Salazar and and uh, other coaches to this day, and even different sports. Swimmers have played around with it. Nordic skiers have, have used his methodology, and uh, it's been very successful. And look, you can't go wrong doing it. I, I, mm -hmm. I think if you're a new runner, with the exception of the first phase of the uh, aerobic conditioning, he believed that you needed to, the magic number was right around 100 miles a week for that 10, I think it's 10 weeks, it could be 12 weeks, mm -hmm. I forget, aerobic conditioning phase. and. And if you get his book, it'll break it down for you if you need it broken down what that week looks like because obviously you're going to have heavier days and lighter days. Uh, but in did, his book, he'll go through all that. Did he you. teach form? 
like you know how there's a lot of form drills that are done now but I'm just kind of curious you know I mean I've, I've done my own studying up on Arthur Lydiard but just um, in terms of you know sort of did, did he really believe that you know before you re really even address a volume that I, you look at yeah. form and, and mechanics did he get into not, that? Not so much I think I remember reading one aspect or one part somewhere I don't know if it was in his book but he said, I think it was in his book, he says, if you want to see perfect form, go to a kid's playground and watch kids run. Oh, that was that's, a that's perfect yeah. form. And, yeah. But all, that being said, when you go into the hill springing phase, that is a, a form work, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about it, sure. you're getting your hips, when you're bounding, you're getting your hips and your body underneath, and you're trying to maximize that power as you're pushing up. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to, when you go from that phase of training into your normal running, you're going to incorporate that. Uh, mm -hmm. The trunk lean, everything, uh, the lean, not trunk, but the ankle lean. And yeah. um, so a, a lot of the stuff people talk about now, you know, you go on YouTube or whatever, and, and it's a lot of regurgitation. It's like everybody wants to be a new influential person with a new idea on training. But if you look back at what these coaches were doing, almost all of it's already been done. Uh, and yeah. it was done by these guys. We're just taking it and we're just kind of recoining a lot of it and yeah. calling it our own. But I don't pretend to be, you yeah. know, some, I, I've just studied coaches and I've learned from coaches. I, yeah, I, I mean, like I, I do have some of my own things. Like I have some exercises in the gym right. that um, I've never seen anybody else do. Mm -hmm. uh, but I love them and mm -hmm. they work for me. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean it's going to work for you or you or anybody mm -hmm. else, but you know, that's half the fun about running, yeah. right? But, but I think principally what you're saying is that principally the training of Arthur Lydiard is really probably the most complete because it, as you said, it just addresses all the different components. It's not just volume. It's yeah. not just speed. It's a combination of those two areas paired with, you know, some other, you know, dynamic, you know, movement, so to speak, mm -hmm. which ultimately I think does in fact make running, your running better yeah. if you can, if you can effectively, you know, formulate uh, a plan that I think works. I think so. anytime, you, the thing is, if you look at training, you have to look at it from the standpoint that we're a living organism and we change through different stresses and uh and long as you get adequate rest and so if you're always doing the same thing all the time you're not going to mm -hmm. you're not going to adapt your, your body's going to adapt and it's no longer going to comp compress uh, move right. forward right uh and so i think overcompensation i think hit training i think it all has its place but from a physiological standpoint it has to be done in the right order mm -hmm. so that you train your body the right way so that you can come to the ultimate peak in your ultimate race mm -hmm. um, or right. season and, right. and I think that and, and also the kind of running that you're doing I think matters oh too. yeah totally because if you're somebody you know such as myself who's you know my my realm is ultra running and you know so I go long but and even so, but even with ultra running yeah but what I what I'm gonna say is that so so there's aspects of that that I fold into my training or I fold into the training of the athletes that I um, coach. Mm -hmm. However, it looks different, yeah. you know, because I think that sometimes what I find is that, you know, um, a, somebody who's relatively new might, might come and say, well, you know, I want to just start running. I just want to run. I want to run many miles and I want to run, you know, um, I just want to be able to go out and just run a bunch of hills and run on trails and, and they end up getting injured. And I think the reason is, is because they're not allowed, allowing that adaptation to happen. And they're also they do the not, same thing every day. they're not integrating, right. They're not integrating the right phase of training at the right time. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that that's, uh, that's but important. It, I think Lydiard was a master of that. But even if you look at, uh, ultra running or trail running, um, so most of these races are completely aerobic, but you have, times within this race where you're running downhill really quickly right uh so you do need to have leg turnover i mean it, look at uh, yeah killing right how fast mm -hmm. it can turn his legs over yeah. so you in a race ultimately the ultimate race is to have a nice even effort throughout the, the whole race and maybe even slightly negative split which i don't think that happens in ultra running but it would be interesting yeah. to see how, it would be <laughs> I interesting think we to all see. tried to do that we aspire but, it would it would be yeah. interesting to see somebody do that but 
the point yeah. is is that um, no matter what event you run, utilizing different methodologies and training your body in a way where you're you're stressing it in different ways is going to make you a more complete runner. Yeah, and I think you'll be able point. to attack down hills. You'll be able like to run that. up hills better. More complete. And your body will adjust. I mean, you, if you just go out and you just start sprinting down downhills, you're going to get injured. I yeah. guarantee it. Yeah. Or in the you other, know, because you think, oh, I'm going to run really fast downhill, and you're and you're not used to that. And, and, the, and then it there's just the puts a lot of yeah pressure on your. And then there's the impact. Right. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I, in some of these races, I watch these guys, they'll get to the top and they'll just take off Bomb. sprinting downhill. Yeah. They don't realize the amount of damage they're doing to their legs if, if they're not trained in that. It's like no different yeah. than any other. I mean, if you don't train for something, you're not going to... It's exactly. Gonna, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be ugly. Yeah, I agree. So anyway. anyways, enjoy okay. your training. Enjoy reading yes. about Arthur Lydiard and um, uh, stay safe. Yeah, stay safe, you guys. And next time we're going to be talking about Alberto. So oh, yeah, we are going to talk about those. Yeah, yeah, Alberto. And then we'll be wrapping things up and, and bringing you guys some, I think, key uh, running uh, exercises that um, we'd like to share with you. So have a great week. Be safe. And hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to follow me at Catch the Breeze. Keep on running. Oh, yeah, you can follow me at 34 Bytes if you want. <laughs> Ciao. Adios.